Uh, so you don't have a, an applied coating that's going to come off. It's actually within the structure of the raw material. Then they go ahead and weave it together. And uh, that's pretty cool. And this is definitely something that occurred at the factory. I don't know what this is. Is it a mouse that got into the... Hey guys, this is Cody from over at Fanatic Tackle. And if you're watching this, I know you probably saw the beginning of this video where we had an unfortunate turn of events. All right, uh, hmm. Gentlemen, ladies, and anyone in between, I welcome you all to the second introduction that you'll be seeing in this video. The other one will be coming up shortly where I kind of unbox and give my initial impressions. And after that, I went ahead and started spooling and I got about, I don't know, 280 yards into this Dio Ballistic LT6000 using 30 pound Fanatic Pro. And this is what I came across. And if you've been fishing braid for as long as I have, which is over 20 years, uh, you'll have come across some bad spots in braid. Uh, and in my, I will say 20 miles of braided line that I've used in my lifetime, I have never come across one as blown out as this. And this happens, I guess, on the loom, if you will, as they're twisting the fibers and the carriers making up the actual braided line. Sometimes under tension, those carriers break down and the individual fibers may break. And this is what you're left with. And it, it, you know, truth be told, I'll show you an image of when I first came across it. It was buried into this weave. It was like somebody wove a dead mouse into the, <laughs> the fishing line. But I went ahead and tried picking it out because I wanted to see if it was actually the fibers themselves, the uh, polyethylene uh, fibers themselves, or if it was something that actually found its way in. And it turns out this was the black fiber. All right, so I got about uh, seven eighths of the way to the false slip here. I always spool up ultra tight when I, I fish braid. And uh, I have this much left on my spool when I noticed this. <laughs> I, in my entire life, in my entire life, I've come across maybe five or six bad spools of braid. You had a splice or a weld in there or whatever you want to call it. I don't know what this is. And basically, I spool my spinning reels with braid as simple as you can see here. I put it on the ground and I let it add tension. The weight of the drill adds you know, resistance and then I'll put a weight on this side to press the spool into the ground more. That gives me about eh, three pounds of force. Enough that your shoulder's a little tired when you're done spooling. And uh, I was greeted to this going through the guides and this is definitely something that occurred at the factory. I don't know what this is. Is it a mouse that got into the... I don't even know. So, I didn't notice anything else within the line indicating a join or a splice or a, a bad weave. I mean... You know what? It looks like the black fiber. That's what it looks like. Would you see this fiber going right into that pile of schmoo? Yep, look at that. So there's an issue in their manufacturing process that caused that. So, uh, yeah, Fanatic, uh, I got about, I don't know, 270 yards. I'm going to send this out to get strength tested. I'll just send the whole remainder left. But uh, just, just a heads up to you guys over at Fanatic my first attempt at spooling your braid that you sent me to do a review on, this is what I came across. And uh, I told you I'm not like Tackle Tour who just wants to promote stuff. So this is going out to the masses. I apologize in advance if it was just a, a production run issue or just a little blunder on the assembly. But these are my personal experiences and they're going out to everybody. So uh, you might want to drill down the uh, quality control on the, on the uh, assembly line. So I've come across it on all the big brand names, whether it's Power Pro, I even on the very early Fenwick Iron Threads from the late 90s, remember seeing something not as big as this though. Uh, Finn's 40G braid, there's little green weld spots within the line, but I think that kind of keeps the sheathed part of the line locked in place so it doesn't slide around. I could be wrong, but I've seen it on a lot of different lines. And when it comes to $50 braid and a company sending me stuff for review, uh, this sort of thing being the worst I've ever seen, I, I can't ignore that. 
And you guys are going to see this. Uh, the guy, the gentleman, I think his name is Cody, who owns Fanatic or is one of the partners. He's going to see this along with you guys. Um, and for my audience, you guys know that I, I look for faults in things. And, I, I, you know, you guys kind of criticize me for doing that. That's because if you're glowing and overly positive about something, you're just going to be let down if you come across a quirk. So I'm trying to find all the stuff that's wrong with this stuff ahead of time. But when it comes to braided fishing line, I mean, J braid is one of my go-to lines. I've probably used about two miles of the stuff and it's been flawless. I've never had an issue. Power Pro I've had eh, maybe a phantom break off or two, but I can't really chalk it up to the line. It could have been just something, you know, on, on, on the bottom that caused the chafe. But it, this, this is, uh, this is no bueno. No bueno. And this was the first spool out of the four that they sent me. First time I tried using this line and I came across something like this. Now, it was at the end of the line. I'm sending this to Aquaholic Lee to do some line testing. So I was planning on giving him about 30 yards of it. So this should cover what he needs to use it for. I'll just send that with him. So this will be going in the mail down to Aquaholic Lee, who is a StriversOnline.com member and a fellow YouTuber who does line actual breaking tests and PR not tests. So we'll be able to get some ABS numbers on this for the video I'm going to be putting out at a later date, which would be a full review of this line. So with that being said, it kind of sucks starting out a video like this in this way. And uh, you'll now see my initial impressions. Enjoy, guys. Hey guys, this is Cody from over at Fanatic Tackle, and if you're watching this, I know you probably saw the beginning of this video where we had an unfortunate turn of events, a little manufacturing defect in one of the products that were actually reviewed on this video. With that, we want to take this time to kind of go over some of our customer service policies here at Fanatic and, and what we would do if something like this happened. This is very unique. We've sent out over 20,000 yards of line so far since we've opened our doors in September and have never had any of these issues. But it does happen. Uh, this is a real world deal, so it can happen. And we want to tell you what we're going to do to fix it. So over at Fanatic, if you have any issues like blobs with your line or tears in the line when you're going to spool it on, go ahead and send in a picture and get a hold of us. We'll have a link to our customer service uh, phone number and I believe email down in this, the comments below. And send us a little message. Just let us know what happened. And we'll do our best to either get it exchanged or return the product and get you your money back. Um, no question to ask. You guys here are our biggest concern at Fanatic, taking care of you, the customer, and making sure you guys have a great experience with Fanatic products. So whenever you're dealing with our stuff, just know we 100% stand behind it, and we're gonna do whatever to make you guys have a great experience. Gentlemen, ladies, and anyone in between, I welcome you all. And today we're gonna be going over my initial impressions of a new braided fishing line. This isn't going to be any long-term type review or anything like that. I'm just going to give you guys uh, just my opinion on some new fishing line that's kind of new to the market. And uh, full disclosure, the company reached out to me and asked if I wanted to do some testing with their stuff. And normally I say no, but uh, I have a lot of fishing reels and I can use all the free line that I can get my hands on. And uh, I asked them for a bunch of different sizes like eight pound, 30 pound, 50 pound. And judging by opening the box and its contents, uh, they oblige. So you got 50 pound, 30 pound, another spool of 30 pound, and this should be the eight. Yep, this is exactly what I requested. And uh, they sent everything. So I don't know what color it is. Oh, this is the blue. And uh, <laughs> truth be told, if this was like some random fishing line company that is me too company, I, I, I probably would have just ignored the email because guys, when I say I get hundreds of requests from manufacturers offering to send me stuff, uh, I, I ain't kidding. And I generally speaking ignore most of it. But as I said earlier, I got a lot of fishing reels and fishing line and braided line, uh, is a, a, <laughs> when it's for free, uh, I usually don't walk away from it. And this stuff looked pretty, pretty cool. So he sent me a, a smattering of different colors in this different sizes. 
And basically what I was going to end up doing is taking the 50 pound and probably doing some chunking with it. I was going to take the 8 pound, load it on this little BFS Aldebaran Baron, and throw some, you know, baits down at around the 16th of an ounce. That's what I usually use this reel for, 16th of an ounce little middle baits and little soft plastics. Uh, also, I'm going to be putting it on a 2000 size Tatula. Obviously, it's going to need some backing because this stuff's pretty thin and the capacity on the 2000 Tatula is pretty, pretty large. And for 30 pound, I'm going to load 30 pound up on the 6000 Ballistic LT. And I'm probably gonna, uh, probably gonna put it on a, uh, a Stella SW spool, so I'm gonna have two spools set up for surf plugging. So uh, it's with that being said, um, let's let's take a take a look. Uh, one of the reasons why I didn't just glance over the eight pound test is, for whatever reason, a lot of companies who offer eight pound test braids, their their measurements are off, and the stuff is is not nearly as as thin as what the package. Uh, stated diameter is so that's what we're going to test right now uh, it feels thin it doesn't feel otherworldly thin and <clears throat> feels like 0 0.007 to me instead of 0 0.005 but we will zero this out and let's see and again this is kind of accurate because usually there's a cross section that's thinner than the other 0 0.008 and there's resistance on there. Yeah, I said it felt like 0.007. It says 0.005. And uh, in addition to that, I mean, if I squeeze it, I can get it down to nothing. See that right there? I had an issue with Finn's 40G and their five pound test that they said I think was like 0.004. And it was 0.009. And when I reached out to them to find out why the diameter was so off, is it the response I got was they used a paint think, a thickness gauge to measure the diameter, not calipers. So basically, they just wedge the line into a thickness gauge and see what can fit. So I, I'm, I'm more inclined to, degree, uh, to, to say that this, instead of being 0.005, is you know, 0.007 to 0.008. So it's a little bit thicker. still thin. You know, it's still, it's basically, guys, it's the same thickness as what you get out of your uh, suffix 832 and 8-pound test, just to give you guys an idea. And we'll take a quick peek at... The 30 pound. And again, this is an, an initial impressions video. I know nothing about this line other than uh, five minutes on the Googler trying to figure out, you know, what this company's all about. And the 30 pound test, uh, it feels pretty thin. I'm not going into how smooth it is just yet because it, I, I can tell you it has a different, different feel. And I gave it a little squeeze. So yeah, this is, this is a little more accurate. Yeah. And we also don't know if there are lumpy spots, meaning throughout the spool are there thinner spots due to inconsistency. All right, so if I go like this, where you really get a long section, if I start putting pressure on it, I can get it down to 0.8. You can see how it rebounded up to 0.9. That's kind of really squeezing it. Let's go to a fresh section. I'm also going to send this line out to Aquaholic Lee, who's another YouTuber and StripersOnline.com member. I haven't even reached out to him yet, but I'm going to send him a bunch of this stuff. So yeah, 0 0.12, 0 0.11, yeah, that's that's okay. That's that's within reason. I'm not I'm not going to ever say anything bad about that measurement being you know that far off. And this is the the 50 pound. Very interesting in feel. It's a heavily colored line, but you don't, it doesn't have that slick waxy feel to it. Okay, so this one, yeah, this one's a little off. We're, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, I have to push it to get it down to that. So we're gonna say this is 0.16. We're, we're splitting hairs here. But I just want to point that out that, you know, it's, it's close. It's within reason. Uh, I, I, this, is, this is close, but again, 0.005 it really isn't. You know, this one, the 30 pound, was, was the closest. We're like, oh, oh, we got our spool down. We're, we're really not going to go much further down that little rabbit hole as far as diameter is concerned. You saw what I saw, so we'll leave it at that. Uh, in terms of feel, um, 
it's not the smoothest line by any, by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, and pretty much any eight strand braid out there uh, is gonna be smoother. That's your J braid, that's your Maxima eight, uh, Fireline Ultra eight braid, uh, or Fireline Ultra eight uh, would be smoother than this stuff. But there's no waxy coating. And for me personally, I'm not a fan of super over-treated lines. Uh, unless I'm really looking for something that's really durable, but I'm well aware that once that coating goes away, the durability is going to handle just like any other line. In addition to that, as the coatings on the lines leave the braid, we're not just talking what you're going to rub off like this. The coatings that permeate the entire weave, like in and out, as that breaks down and separates, it leaves gaps and voids and everything gets loose kind of like your, uh, your Super Slick uh, Power Pro. And that leads to kind of a, a different construction of the line after a lot of use. This stuff, uh, they, they, they say it's a solution dyed material. Now, I don't know what the raw material is. My guess is it's the post-patent expiration spectra that every company out there is using, which isn't bad. Guys, I love J-Braid. This is for tuna. This is for surf stripers. And I have never had a failure or anything go wrong with anything J-Braid that I've used. And I've probably used two miles of the stuff in you know, pound tests from uh, eight pound all the way up to 80. So it's good stuff just because it doesn't have Spectra or Dyneema or Ivanis or whatever it's called now with the J-Braid Grand and that uh, Sunline Braid. Uh, it's still high molecular weight, you know, polyethylene. Uh, in its raw form. And a solution dyed fiber means they, they kind of dye the raw material as far as I, my, my knowledge of Googling. Uh, so you don't have a, an a applied coating that's going to come off. It's actually within the structure of the raw material. Then they go ahead and weave it together. And uh, that's pretty cool. <laughs> I like that green spot Dacron look. So in, in terms of you know, the structure of the line, they say it's a six carrier weave. I, I have no problems. One of my favorite braids of all time, especially for uh, freshwater fishing, was uh, a six carrier line. And, you know, when you have a little bit of that coarseness, that, that, that a little bit of abrasiveness, and uh, you know me, guys, I like to clip mics to things. Let's give you an idea. Let's see if I can get a good representation as to what this stuff feels like with the mic pinched on it. Now this stuff here is the 30 pound test Iowa J braid and it's been used for a little bit so the coating's a little worn off. But let's take a look at how this sounds. And then back to the phonetic braid. definitely tell you that uh, this stuff comes through slicker. It feels slicker because it doesn't have a coating. Anytime you have a coating that wears off, it never wears off evenly. So it kind of, kind of sticks and it holds water more. So I, I think what I'm going to do here is pretty much wrap it up. I'm not going to do any knot tests. I just wanted to give you guys a, a heads up as to what this stuff's all about and uh, let you guys know that this is going to be one of the lines going to be testing for the remainder of the fall. And usually when it comes to striped bass fishing and surf casting, you can get a good idea rather quickly how a line's going to handle. And, uh, you know, whereas with bass fishing, when you put it on a bait caster, braid lasts forever unless you're, you know, breaking stuff off or fishing barnacle, you know, pilings and stuff like that or whatever you want to call it. So, or concrete, you know, rubble. Uh, usually you can get two seasons out of a bait caster with braid without any issues. Uh, whereas with a surf spinning reel and setup a lot of times you're dealing with the salt soaking into the line leave, leaving the deposits behind and then you have the stuff that gets absorbed or held onto the weave of the braid that runs through the guides and that wears out the fibers of the line lots lots of stuff 
along with rapid elongation when you're casting heavy lures long distances. So usually when you're surf casting, braid will tend to break down quicker with uh, with spinning gear. And it's uh, with that being said, appreciate you guys for showing up for this. And again, I'm not trying to promote for the company. That's not how I do things. I just want to you know get my unboxing and initial impressions on camera for you guys to see. So far, it's uh, it's interesting stuff. It's very limp. Uh, sometimes limp lines don't do well. Sometimes you want that extra wiry natured lines like the Fireline Ultra 8, uh, especially for fishing in windy uh, conditions because tip wraps are a pain in the ass. Uh, and some spinning reels that you use in salt water that don't handle braid very well, if you go with a light line or a limp line, I should say, uh, you'll get, you know, slack line loops that come over the spool. You'll get tip wraps and, you know, more prone to wind knots when you're using like an old 10Z or something along those lines. So thanks guys for showing up. I appreciate your time. Tight lines. And I'll be back uh, in the next, I'd say, month or so uh, with an update on how this stuff actually performs and how it lasts. So tight lines and I'll see you soon.